You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zen Tech Consultants. I am the eternally loquacious Jim, and with me, as always, is my partner in crime. Uh, this is Rocco, but, you know, I, I, I let's just move on. Forget it. I... I don't want to say what I was thinking. <laughs> hey, you're not allowed to use that kind of language on air, pal. Easy. <laughs> this is a family show. Your wife listens. <laughs> All right. So behave yourself. So what are we talking about today? Oh, so today we're talking about um, civil cat. And uh, the concept is that we don't need all the expensive verticals. And we have a special guest on the podcast today, Mr. Craig Swearingen. All right. Hopefully I didn't mutilate that, Craig. <laughs> Perfect, man. It was all great. All right. I got it right. Uh Craig is from BricsCat, and he's here with us today. And Craig's uh, an implementation specialist at BricsCat with a, uh, a long and solid background in both civil design and CAD management. So, Craig, thank you so much for being here with us today. We really appreciate you taking the time, man. Oh, absolutely. I've uh, listened to your podcast quite a bit over the past few years. Oh, I have I'm, to I'm say so it's, sorry. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say it's. It's one of the most knowledgeable and respectable podcasts that I've listened to, so I appreciate having the opportunity to be on it. Oh, awesome. I'm glad, oh, you, thank glad you. you'd be here. Look at us. Somebody said something nice about us, Rocco. Wow. Uh, he's gonna... just talking about me. Oh, uh, probably. It's not, not even a question, really. <laughs> but just the same, you should remember to sign the check after the show is over for this guy. So... <laughs> All right. So in, in light of the fact that you know Craig and I are both longtime civil nerds, um, yeah, I, I really thought this would be a great opportunity for us to kind of get into some some cool civil and site related tools, and 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 it also gives me the benefit of, of we can bore Rocco half to death. So this is like a double win for me. I torture Rocco, and we get inter- interesting conversation for me. So it's a it's a beautiful thing all around. All right, so let's start this off right by finding a little bit more about Craig for our listeners. So Craig, why don't you fill our listeners in on your personal background, right, and exactly what you do as an implementation specialist over at BricsCat. Well, uh, thanks, Jim. I uh, started in Bricks ha- at BricsCat in October of 2020, so I'm still relatively new, learning my way around. Um, I work with uh, Robert Green. And, uh, awesome guy. As is, yeah. <laughs> I like absolutely. Robert. He's been, he's been silly enough to be on the show four or five times. So. Yeah, he's a, he's a wealth of knowledge, so really to be is. able to work with him every day is, is a, a genuine pleasure. But uh, I support global activities, sales activities, uh, specifically North America, um, as well as that leads it to be involved heavily with social media and the interaction online. Um, I also interact with the support staff to proactively resolve customer issues, and we formulate the implementation plans to switch customers to BricsCAD um, from their other CAD platform, which includes installing, configuring, and customizing their existing uh, CAD tools. Um, not only am I involved with the front end, but I'm involved on the back end, uh, which is also you know, comprised of providing solutions for the immediate needs of the client and passing along potential solutions to the feature and development teams at BricsCAD. Um, within all that, I collect and analyze their CAD requirements, and uh, that pertains to guiding and assisting each client, making their existing tools functional within BricsCAD, and basically have BricsCAD act the same way as their current CAD software. Nice. So basically, you 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 and Robert are the guys who make it easy to make the move, right? Just make it work so people can sit down and get things done that they need to get done. That's our goal. That's it. It's a beautiful goal to have, and you guys do it really well, I have to say. Um, Thank you. All right, so the, the big topic that I really wanted to hit on today was on, uh, you know, civil-related, you know, we'll quote-unquote call them verticals, um, right? Those are those big money, you know, uh, big learning curve, big performance civil packages, you know, things like Bentley Inroads and Civil 3D from Autodesk. Um, and, and listen, you know, those are immensely powerful uh, you know, civil design systems, right? And, and, you know, they're touted to handle, you know, every type of civil function you might ever need. 
right? From tin surfacing to corridors and gratings. Uh, you know, the problem, of course, is that those vertical systems, you know, are not cheap. Um, you know, I've worked with all of the major ones and, and I still spend a good bit of my time here at Zentech, you know, training people on, on how to use those verticals and helping them set up and configure those systems. Um, and, you know, and, and while I'll tell you that those systems do some really amazing stuff, you are without a doubt paying a serious premium for them. Um, and, and BricsCAD has an entirely different approach to this, right? Which is, you know, they're offering vital civil design features, not as a vertical, but integrated right into their basic CAD system without the need for having a completely separate program, which I think is really amazing. So Craig, what, what tools does BricsCAD offer in terms of uh, the civil design? And, and which version or versions of BricsCAD do people need to be able to access those civil tools? You know, I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, a lot of those vertical programs are not cheap. Um, and that's one of the, that was one of the main premises behind BricsCAD and the development team is to say, how do we offer this within the current program mm -hmm. without it being at an astronomical rate? Um, everything that you mentioned as far as your surface tools, your alignments, your grading tools, your volume surfacing, all of that is contained within BricsCAD Pro. Um, as well, you know, there are different levels of licensing that you can that you can subscribe to or purchase through BricsCAD, uh, whether that's the Ultimate Suite and BIM, all the way down through uh, Mechanical and Pro and into the light version. Um, much of what we're going to talk about today is, is within the BricsCAD Pro and up, which would include BIM and the Ultimate Suite. So any of the uh, aforementioned tools, whether it's, the, again, the tin surfacing, the corridors, the grading, all of that is provided within BricsCAD Pro, um, and it comes directly in your program as soon as you boot it up. Right. As man, like I said, in the BricsCAD Pro level, it's it's really just it's it's the basic CAD version. You know, that's what most of our customers buy. You know, it's what they're usually working with. So there's nothing really dramatic about it. So, um, so so you know, if if there's one big complaint that I, that I hear about. Uh, with those big name verticals, you know, <laughs> aside from their crazy pricing, um, it's that they're just too complex. Uh, you know, when you're talking about tools like Civil 3D, they're they're really built to allow for the users to create the most complex and esoteric design conditions, right? Uh, using those those tools, that means that even if you're doing a simple parking lot surface build, right, something real simple, you still have to go through all the same processes and steps that you'd have to go through when you're designing an international airport, right? You know, I think these big systems, they take this, this one size fits all approach to their tools. And that means that the tool has to be complex so that, you know, in complex areas, you can still use it. What I really like about the BricsCAD civil tools um, is that they've incorporated the most commonly used civil features into their system. And I think they've done a really nice job of making those tools simple enough for anybody to use while still generating really nice detailed output. So, Craig, you know, who, who do you guys find on the BricsCAD side? Who do you find to be the primary target market for the BricsCAD civil features? I mean, you know, what type of work do you see most most of your clients focusing on? Your, your, is it subdivision, roadway, survey? Where, where do the users fall in that? As far as a primary market, it is as wide as you've listed there. It's as wide as you would assume. Um, we have noticed that there are site firms that enjoy the simplicity of the workflows. Mm -hmm. And whether that is landscape architecture or site design, um, We've also noticed that major civil firms like having the flexibility of BricsCAD Pro, and that provides them to take a conceptual idea and being able to use that within the drawing um, for production. Right. Um, and that's the major benefit of BricsCAD, you know, the ability for everything to be DWG. Um, there's no import and export process that eliminates the multiple file types and, and the hassle of all that kind of back and forth. So, you know, everyday work, gaining more and more traction with the engineering industry in general, and not just roads and bridges within civil, but GIS. Mm -hmm. um, and, and don't forget, you know, mechanical and electrical as well. But the uh, residential and interior design have also greatly benefited from the ease of use 
and the cost efficiencies of BricksCAD. So not only by providing a competitive product by reducing production time and the overall software costs, that obviously uh, increases the client revenue, which is which is very important once you get to those smaller and mid-sized firms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, you know, there, there, there's money that, you know, those big companies can just write off as overhead and not worry about it. And that's that's the entire profit margin sometimes on these small and medium-sized firms' jobs, no doubt. Um, so speaking of the small and medium-sized firms, Rocco, uh, let, let's wake you up and bring you in here. Um, you, you know, we have actually seen a lot of interest around, you know, BricsCAD Pro um, in those those size firms here, right? Uh, both on the on the design and, and the civil site side and design, but we've even seen some interest on excavating and construction companies really taking hard looks at the BricsCAD Pro. So what, what do you find that they're looking for, Rocco, in terms of functionality? What type of work do you see them using it for when you're talking to them over here at Zentech? You know, it, it covers, uh, it, it runs across the, the board in terms of what they're looking for. But I, I think the big thing is that they're looking, um, a lot of the smaller and medium-sized firms are looking for a more affordable solution. That's really what it comes down to. Right. It, it's it's not even, I, I mean, ease of use, of course, is important. But being able to, for, for a small firm to be able to, to get into the fields here and to actually do do work. Um, they they want something that's that's affordable, and they love the fact that you can get a perpetual license, right? You have the option of either an annual or a perpetual license. So, um, so it really varies, you know, from from your small surveying firm up to your medium size, um, you know, civil engineering firm, uh, who who we have moving to BricsCAD. Okay, so you're getting a nice blend of folks. Okay, so. One one phrase I think that comes up a lot, right? Whenever I'm talking to clients uh, in, in this arena, it's it's the fields to finish concept. Uh, in other words, you know, people want to be able to do their site work, their site design, from all the way from that initial field survey data out in the field, all the way through the final complete, you know, grading design of roadways, et cetera, cross sections. And, and that's what those, you know, big verticals promise, right? And, and they do it with a, with a limited degree of success. Um, and, and if you're not using one of those big packages, you, you usually, you need to have a few different systems to make that happen, right? You're going to need, uh, you know, one survey software, and then you're going to need a 2D CAD system, and you're going to need a separate road design software or a separate plugin for grading, and on and on. Uh, and, and that can really be a problem you know, in terms of control and, and of course, cost. So, Craig, how do the civil tools in, in BricsCAD actually stack up on this field to finish concept? Um, you know, what type of work can the users accomplish with the out-of-the-box tools? All right, and which ones will they still need add-ons for, if any? That's, that's a great question. Um, there are... I guess the main idea of BricsCAD is to make it compatible with your current CAD software so that regardless of whether you want to keep one or 50 of your current licenses that you have, you can always work uh, in tandem with the two. So let's say that you have some complex road design that you need to be done in a different software. You could do the, the lower tasks uh, in BricsCAD and, and still have a viable product in the very end. Um, additionally, um, BricsCAD has the opportunity to download Express tools, mm -hmm. just like your other CAD platforms. Um, there are hundreds of CAD add-ons that you can find through the applications portal through BricsCAD. Um, many of those are free, as well as you have your typical civil site design platforms, your rhinos and grasshoppers. Um, as well as the spatial manager for BricsCAD. So there are some additional add-ons that you may need depending on what type of industry that you're in. But for the most part, it is a field to finish concept that you can go in, do everything that you need to within BricsCAD, even take your 2D design and have that be modeled immediately all within the DWG uh, file format. So. The, uh, the developers at BricsCAD and the people behind it spent a lot of time and a lot of brain power making sure 
that there's everything that you need right in that program, and uh, it's going to serve 90% of, of whatever industry or client uh, their needs. Right. And I think it does a really nice job. Like I said, I've, I've worked with it quite a bit. Um, and even get, you know, like I said, it lets you bring in those initial survey, you know, data points all the way up through advanced quarter and stuff. And that's, that's kind of what we're going to talk about in the second half. So I want to actually take a break here so we can listen to today's sponsor. Um, and like I said, when we get back, I want to talk with Craig in a, a good bit more detail about some of these civil processes in the BricsCAD civil tools and which ones he sees real benefits in and how they work. So we're going to take a break and we'll be back in just a few more minutes with more of the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Today's episode of the Cattle Call Podcast is brought to you by Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. We're bringing ourselves to you. Aren't we nice? So we wanted to talk to you guys today about uh, some of the things that we offer at Zentech Consultants. In particular, we wanted to talk to you today about our offerings around developing and upgrading your CAD standards. We are here to help you guys with all of your CAD standard needs from ongoing drafting and design support to block and library development, full CAD standards development, right? CAD version upgrades, really whatever it is that you guys need when it comes to developing, implementing, and tweaking your current CAD standards. Or like I said, if you don't have any yet, we can help you build them from scratch. So Rocco, why don't you tell all the good folks how they can reach out to us and start that conversation. Yeah, there's a lot of information for people on our website, zentechconsultants.net. That's Z-E-N-T-E-K, consultants.net. Or you can give us a call, 866-824-4459, or even drop us an email, sales at zentechconsultants.net. Ooh, nice. Cat standards from Zentech Consultants. You're listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast. And we are talking with Craig Swearingen of BricsCAD uh, about the civil tools that are built right into the BricsCAD Pro system. Um, and in this half of the show, I want to talk in some more detail about the tools that BricsCAD has and what they can and what they can't do for you on the design side. Um, so, Craig, you know, the, the most basic tool, I think, that we all need in, in the civil world is the ability to generate the tin surface, right? The 3D uh, tin surface. So, how does BricsCAD handle surfacing, right? What ways do we have to build them? And, and what if I already have a civil 3D surface or if I need to import or export surfacing to and from another civil system? Uh, really, it is... Uh... It's a, I would say it's a piece of cake. Um, I've not really had any problems doing any sort of uh, importing or exporting with uh, the BricsCAD tin surfaces. Um, the direct modeling that goes along with that is very intuitive. Um, it is as, to me, it's as easy and as simple as your current CAD programs. You know, the, uh, <clears throat> the surface is based upon your... Uh, is based upon your drawing entities and the data import, you know, can be data imported from your CSV or a text file format. Um, there's multi, you know, all sorts of abilities to, uh, to modify your, your properties and uh, set your points and your procedures then go along with those. Um, the uh, tin service, the ability to create your tin surface is as simple as you can even place points in your drawing um, right. and assign an elevation to it. So yeah, I, um, it's actually one of the things that I like most about that. You know, the the, the BricsCAD tools there is that you know a lot of the the different systems we, when you bring in your point data from, like you said, from the CSV or the text files, it's kind of a separate entity, and then you have to kind of use that to build your surface. And I love the fact that you can actually just import the points, and it builds a surface from those without you doing anything else. It's just like bring in the points. There's the surface, and we're done. You know, it's it's really really nice, particularly on the existing and the survey side. I'm a big kind of how it should be, right? Yeah. yeah, let's make it simple on the end user. Who'd have thought? <laughs> what a concept! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's amazing how often that concept never makes it to the, to the development teams. Um, so, <laughs> so, all right, you know, what one of the um, most time consuming and 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 I find frustrating. Uh, processes with those large civil vertical systems is is in the grading 
Um, you know, grading objects and tools in those systems really require a, a whole lot of training uh, and, and, and a bunch of trial and error before you really start to become comfortable using those. Um, you know, luckily it's good for me, right? I, I train people on that, so they pay me to teach them how to do that. But I'll be honest and tell you, you know, I, I've, I've worked with those tools for years now. And there are some days where I still struggle with getting the grading objects to, to work. You know, setting the slopes and the depths, or whether it's, you know, you're trying to grade from the back of a curb or from a berm or from a pond edge. Uh, you know, and then being able to update and change those slopes and the elevations afterwards, right, as the design needs to be updated, that's not a small task in those big systems. Uh, you know, and one of the things I really do love about BricsCAD is they have taken a much more simplified approach to the user interface for their gradings. So, Craig, what, what, what's different about the way BricsCAD works with gradings, right? What makes them easier to use and update than, you know, similar objects would be in those big name packages? Well, it doesn't want to make you pull your hair out. Well, I don't have any, so that's not really an issue for me. But, or maybe I'd still have some if I hadn't spent years pulling it out with the other systems. There you go. There you go. Well, I think uh, the, the biggest difference is just the dynamic ability. It is incredible. Um, not only is the user able to adjust the grading in much in a much easier fashion, but the AI intuitiveness with BricsCAD it updates all other aspects accordingly. So, in other CAD programs, like you mentioned, you would need to go back and manually adjust everything. Um, and you want to talk about tedious tasks, right? Yeah. Um, forever. So you know, even just specifically, I guess the uh, grading balance command um, allows you to go in and balance the cut and fill volumes within a specified tolerance. So you can lower and raise the elevation of your grading input entity and the result is is grading that has a net volume uh, around zero um, depending on your set tolerance, right? Mm -hmm. So BricsCAD takes all these tools and more and it plus again it's in a 2D drafting system and what gets overlooked and all that um, again, it's the price compared to other CAD software. So not only are they asking you to do more work by making more adjustments, but then they charge you more for the program. Um, so that seems, you know, in a way, just kind of counterintuitive to me. Yeah, no, I would agree with you on that. I, I find that it's really, really simple. There's a lot of just, you know, grip editing and simple, you know, click on an object, change its elevation, and it self-resolves. Um, it does Correct. a really nice job. It's you know the AI built into this 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 BricsCAD grading system is really nice. So, um, so another you know, big feature, all right, that I like in BricsCAD is is their alignments. Um, now, look, you know, for the, for those of you who are not like you know Craig and I who who live and work in the civil arena, um, an alignment, right? It's it's a defined linear path, right? That that the system can follow, um, and it lets it get you know elevation and station and coordinate data from that line uh, you know it, it, we use it a lot of time for things like you know road center lines or streams or berms and so on and and it really is the key in developing uh, things like road profiles right and controlling and adjusting the elevation at any point of your design along that alignment so you know one area that people really struggle with uh, in those other systems is, is is setting the initial elevations for the alignment and then going back and being able to adjust the alignment to your design. So in other words, starting with existing elevations and then kind of coming back with, with a proposed design. Uh, you know, in most of these verticals, that means you're going to develop two separate profiles, right? And, and, and print them both on screen. You're going to have a, you know, an existing ground profile and a proposed design profile. And then you have to kind of work those in conjunction to get what you're looking for. And BricsCAD actually took a completely different approach to this that I really like. Um, so Craig, can you explain to the listeners, you know, the concept of, of the horizontal and vertical alignment views and how they work in the BricsCAD environment, right? And, and, and how are those connected back to the civil grading? Sure. Well, after creating your alignment, you know, you can continue your horizontal vertical alignment add or delete your PVI points or whatever you want to change the 10 surface. Um, the grading is dynamically connected to that existing surface and again the grading is attached to the input and the target surface so like we previously discussed by moving the mouse in and out um, you can adjust the slope of your grading or the desired slopes and as well as the grips so within the grips of your alignments 
um, <clears throat> and your and your 3D alignment that it creates. Um, it allows you to adjust not just your alignment and your elevations, but your your corridor and your grading. It all is so integrated together um, that instead of having to again go back and change each one of those to match accordingly you are addressing all of your concerns all at once all at one time all in one workflow and it makes it so much easier to i don't want to say guess but when you have the numbers that you need to go in and input those and know that there's there's no further adjustments that you need to be made because everything is linked together yeah as I, you know, I find from my end that just being able to, you know, go in and just kind of tilt your view a little bit and, and, and click on a on a grip point in the center of a road and just like pull it up two or three feet till the slope looks about right and mm-hmm. see it update in real time and then just be able to, to, to go over and say, okay, oh, that gave me, you know, an, an outbound grade of, you know, 3.8%. I'm just going to round that off to, you know, 4% and get nice, yep. even, steady. Just, just, it's a really, really simple, easy way to work. So I'm a big fan of it. Um, uh, so Rocco, let, let's bring you back in here. I'm actually going to kind of bounce back a little to, to something you, you alluded to a little bit in the first half, um, of the show today. So who do you, who are you seeing as our big target market for these Bricks CAD civil tools? I mean, are, you know, are they being seriously looked at and considered for large civil firms or, or are we seeing, you know, interest primarily from smaller firms who are, you know, usually using those basic 2D CAD systems like Bricks CAD or, or AutoCAD, and and they want to get better civil tools without the time and money investment on those big packages. Where where's the sweet spot? Yeah, I mean, Craig could certainly um, you know uh, give, give his feedback here as to you know the kinds of firms that he works with. But uh, you know, from from our perspective, it's a lot of the it's a lot of the smaller to medium sized firms. Um, those that are, like I said before, are looking for an easier um, point of uh, point of entry into into using these tools, who are looking for a way to, to reduce costs, um, as as we've described here, you, mm-hmm. it could easily it can definitely be done with BricsCAD. Um, you know, I, I think that part of the the challenge comes into play is where you have folks that have been using other other CAD systems for so many years. And you know, and, and getting them to convert uh, over, but that transition, as you guys can you know uh, can better explain, is not as difficult as you might imagine. Um, so it's just a matter of, uh, of putting some effort into it. Um, but definitely, the, the medium size, medium small to medium sized firms is what we see. I mean, are you would you would you agree with that, Craig? Yeah, I have a tendency to believe that there are three types of firms, and uh, one of those are people who are very loyal to their current CAD software. Some may be in a position where they are maybe stuck in a contract, and the third is people are fed up and they're ready (laughs) to switch. And so it's a matter of when you're doing your marketing and your investigation, what, what category do they fall in? And I think you've described it very well, Rocco, is that it is not as difficult as one might think it would be to switch everything over. And that, again, is the beauty of what this BricsCAD team in general has done, is to make sure that your that when you install BricsCAD, it is going to work and function just like your current CAD software. And I know it's hard to believe, but they have dedicated so much time and effort into processes as well as uh, giving you support um, along the way to make sure that that transition is as seamless as possible. And quite honestly, with the familiarity between the two programs, even the commands and everything else, a, 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 an, an experienced CAD user, it might not take them any more than a half a day to be up and running. Yeah. And that's the case. See, and, and Craig's being nice. He's not naming the competitor, but I, 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 I don't have to be nice. If you <laughs> use AutoCAD, you can sit down in front of a Bricks CAD system with no training and go to work, and you're going to be fine. It's that I will say similar. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I know you're you're not allowed to say it, but I can, so it's okay to be me. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. So you know the latest version of Bricks CAD Pro, right? Which is kind of that straight two D uh, equivalent with these added you know civil tools and some other real nice features in it. Um, 
they've even gone you know as far as including, which just in the last release, uh, full corridor modeling in the base package, right? That means you can develop fully functional road designs with full depth pavements and curbs in a really simple and intuitive manner. It is dramatically simpler than what you would deal in, in those larger packages. Um, you know, and, and that overall process of corridor design is without a doubt the most complicated one that, that people struggle with in those big vertical systems. Uh, and I think, you know, BricsCAD does a, a, a really good job of just making it simple enough so that most people can understand and work with corridor designs pretty easily. Um, so, Craig, can you kind of, you know, I know it's hard to, to do it right, you know, verbally, right? <laughs> it's just so much easier when we can show these things on screen. But, you know, can, can you kind of walk us through the process of, of you know, working with corridors in BricsCAD? Uh, you know, what steps do we need to take to build a full road design? And what do you find is easier to do in BricsCAD in particular in terms of steps than it would be in like another, you know, competitive system? Well, I, I tell you what, it is always, in my experience, it is always easier to kind of watch somebody do the work, right? Yeah. And at the same time, you still have to be able to explain what you're doing in simple man's terms so that everybody can kind of follow <laughs> along. However, if there is a need for a video, you can always find awesome help videos and tutorials at Brixis.com. Absolutely. So I'll just throw that out there before I start. So if you get confused with me describing everything, you can go to a video and it will pretty much walk you through the whole entire process. So um, for those that don't know, a corridor is used for modeling three-dimensional linear objects like roads and railways, uh, retaining walls and bridges. Um, it primarily consists of like a 3D alignment of the linear object and the cross section. So corridors are based upon a corridor template like uh, Jim had described there. Um, <clears throat> Within BricsCAD, the corridor template basically represents the framework to append the collection of elements and objects of the corridor, and that enables you to uh, create the corridor template. And uh, you can add all sorts of elements to it and the desired properties and entities that go along with that. So you would save your corridor template. Now you would then open the drawing that contains your 10 surface, your 3D alignment, and your corridor template. And so once you select the 3D alignment, and that's used as your corridor baseline, then you select your template, and then you select the region to start, like your start station, and you, you select your end station. And from there, it models your corridor. And in real time, uh, by dragging around your 3D alignment, everything adjusts. And it's just like we talked about a few minutes ago. It is an absolute time saver to be able to have that, have that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Have that is have that available at your disposal rather than having to go back and adjust everything or go into four different drawings and back and forth. <laughs> and you know what I mean? You laughed because you know it's true. Oh, I know exactly uh, what you mean. You know that, that that simple concept of of just generating the template. Uh, you know, generating a template in, in, in a system like Civil 3D, where you're working with assemblies and sub-assemblies and predefined properties and thousands of locked-in components that you have to understand. And in BricsCAD, you can draw it as a polyline. Just sketch out right. what you want your road to look like. It'll use that. That alone, yeah. just uh, it, it just makes such a difference. It's amazing. It's it's impressive. So, all right, so. You know, so far through through most of the day, right? I've kind of guided the questions, right, to kind of focus on the stuff that, you know, obviously I find really interesting in the Bricks CAD tools. Uh, but you know, Craig's been a, a good sport about that, so I want to give him a Craig, a, you know, Craig here a chance to kind of spout a little bit on his own preferences. So I'm going to throw one last question at you, Craig, and let you take final control of the conversation. What's your favorite tool, all right, civil tool in in Bricks CAD, and why? I, and, and also, what, what is your big wish list item that you're hoping gets added in future releases? What are you looking for? Well, well, um, there are a couple tools, especially being a, a former CAD technician. And I guess once a CAD technician, always a CAD technician. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's in our blood. Um, and as well as being a, a, a CAD manager. Um, one of the things that I really like about the Brix CAD platform is the Blockify tool. And it specifically is a tool that 
identifies identical sets of entities within the drawing, both 2D and 3D, and replaces them by block references. So let's say you've received the drawing from an outside consultant and you get in the drawing and everything's exploded. And let's say it is a uh, markup of an office building where they have desks and chairs all over the place. You would then highlight uh, the chair that you wanted and its entire entity. And it then the AI intuitiveness of Brooks CAD would go through the entire drawing, find all the properties that are the same, and replace all of those entities by a block reference. Mm -hmm. And not only does that allow you to move within your drawing a little bit freer, um, it reduces, it can reduce your drawing size up to 90%. Yeah. And to me, that's a game changer. Yeah, um, that's a big one. Some, something we also didn't really mention is, mention is the uh, integration of BricsCAD and Twinmotion. Um, you know, you can visualize your design at every phase of your workflow uh, within BricsCAD BIM. This would be a part of the BIM platform. And with a single click, you can start like a real-time rendering and walk through your fully rendered model project. I mean, that's um, so impressive to be able to take that from, from a 2D aspect to a 3D aspect and then have it immediately modeled uh, without having to use three or four different programs and again, going through the import and export process of all the file types. Um, as far as anything that gets added in the future, um, I can see something smaller on a smaller item, uh, like a calculator. It's hard to believe that BricsCAD doesn't have a calculator. Um, but I can see that being added. Um, and as far as, um, you know, major items, I think, and I'm not just saying this because I work for the company, because before I did work for the company, I was investigating BricsCAD as a potential solution for the firm I worked for. Mm -hmm. um, and what I was most impressed with is that really nothing compares to it, um, whether it's the BIM platform, whether it's the Pro platform, or even the Light platform. Um, it is all there. It is all entailed within one program. There's not a bunch of switching around. Um, it's all DWG. You can still have the network licensing as far as single seat licensing. So there's just a lot more flexibility that comes along with that. Um, and it's, as far as looking at it from a cab manager and a revenue aspect, um, I think you'd be silly not to incorporate this as part of your workflow. It doesn't mean a complete replacement but I'm sure there are people within your organization that may not use all of the civil tools that you currently have on your software, and what are you doing in return? You're basically, to an extent, throwing that money away. Yeah. So there is a way, again, to incorporate these two together to open up your other CAD software, save what you're doing, and go immediately into BricsCAD, and it, it duplicates and opens everything up in the same way as you'd see it in your other platform. So... Um, I can see bigger and better things with BricsCAD. Um, I'll leave that up to the development staff. <laughs> but the beauty about my position is I am kind of the middleman. Um, so if there is something from a client that they come to me with and say, hey, we would really like to see this, I'm the one that then passes that along to development and says, hey, we have a client here that could really use this in the development tool. And I've, I've seen it just with the little time that I've been here that – they go ecstatic and say, this is terrific, and we're going to try to get this out in the next release. There you go. It's nice to have that input directly in. So here's your input. When you when they do your calculator, tell them they need to do one for us civil guys that works with like acres and square yards and cubic yards rather than the you know feet and inches, right? Everybody forgets it's, about us. <laughs> it's the simplicity of it, right? You get back to the simple things at times, and I think a lot of times when you get into software development – you're wanting the biggest, brightest ideas that's kind of the showmaker, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it is those smaller items that is the, the basic functionality of the program. Yeah. So if you can't get the basic functionalities right, good luck getting people to recognize the major you know, uh, showstoppers and, and the things that are trying to be spot, spotlighted um, as, the, uh, as the major development. So, yeah, I... Uh, I agree with you there as far as a calculator. <laughs> you know, I like Google, 
but to have to convert square feet to acres every time is it, not it's always a pain. Desirable. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So there you go. All right. So I think we can wrap it up there. And I want to thank Craig for joining us today and help us kind of wrap our brains around all the civil tools inside of BricsCAD. So Craig, it was a great conversation, man. I appreciate your being here. Thank you, Jim and Rocco, again. Yeah. This, was, this was a blast. Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. And hopefully we didn't scare you off too much and you'll keep listening and consider coming back again. So, <laughs> I'm your number one fan. Woo! I have a fan. Look yeah. at that, Rocco. And you said I'd never have one. <laughs> oh, wait. No, that was my wife said I'd never. Ah, well, whatever. <laughs> Nobody likes me. I'm okay with it. <laughs> All right, folks. We're going to get out of here. And we will catch you next time on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody, today's cattle call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net or you can even call us 866-824-4459. Excellent, we look forward to hearing from y'all.